What's up guys, today we're gonna to be editing this interactive virtual reality effect. First of all, we're going to need a POV shot with some hand gestures swiping across the screen. And then on this shot, what I'm going to do is add some markers where we want to change the graphics that we're going to add in. So right here, this is where we want the graphics to enter the screen. I'm going to select my video clip and press M on the keyboard, and that will create this little marker here. And then if we move along on this first swipe across the screen, in the middle of the swipe, I'm going to add another marker. And then we have one more swipe in the middle I'm going to press M on the keyboard. And then at the end where we're sort of like pressing, I'm going to add another marker there. So now we know where we need to place the graphics and to change the graphics. One thing I would recommend is using a higher shutter speed when shooting this POV shot. As you can see, there's a lot of motion blur, which actually makes it a lot harder to mask out the hand later on in the video. Now we need to bring in the images for the graphics. Over here, I have three video clips I want to use for this, for the graphics. I'm going to drag my first video clip over, over my POV shot, and you can use the video. I created a freeze frame, and to do that, I selected the video clip, hold down shift and press H. This will create this hold frame, which is a freeze frame of that video. I'm going to cut this over that first marker where this graphics will change. Let's bring in my next graphic, hold down shift and press H and then just trim that. So if I select these and press V, just to look at the POV, the hand gesture is swiping from left to right. So what I need to do is animate these images to swipe across the screen from left to right. And we could select these, go to the transform tool and then keyframe these off of the screen. The way I did it was a lot easier. I just added a transition in between these two video clips. So if we go to the transitions tab, over here and I use this slide transition. I'll leave a link to this in the description if you want to download it. So if we select the side of one of these clips and double click on the slide transition, now we get this slide effect. And I know it's in the right place because I've added this marker. Now I can bring in my final graphics image, hold down shift and press H, trim that down, add that into position and then add another transition. Now we have the graphics, we can select all of these, right click and add them into a new compound clip and scale this down to the size you want it on the screen. I actually went one step further and I scaled it down and added it into a new compound clip to add that sort of like distortion effect. Next, I'm going to go to my effects tab and I used this CC lens effect, added that onto the image and then turn the amount up to get this distortion effect on the sides. Also this RGB effect. Then I added a mask. So if we go to mask and keying and added a shape mask to create this sort of like widescreen panel. Next, I added a glitch overlay to this. So if we go to the titles and generators tab over here and go down to dynamic backgrounds, if you have an updated Final Cut Pro, then you should have this pink static generator and we can add this over the video, cut it down and size it into the frame. Go to the blend mode and click on screen. And then we can go to the color board, turn down the saturation and go to exposure, turn down the shadows. So now we should just be left with this sort of like glitch overlay effect, or you could use a glitch effect, anything that gives it a bit of a glitch effect. Next, I added in a title to this. So if we go up to the titles tab and drag in a title over this, and then I added some more titles as the graphics changed. I also added the kind of outline glow effect. And to do that, I copy and pasted this layer here. And then over in the effects tab, I used the mask glow effect and added that onto the video. And then I also added this clock wipe effect to that layer. Now we have this glowing outline effect around the graphics. I did also copy and paste this. And on the top layer here, I changed the settings on the clock wipe rotation amount. I just turned them down slightly and then changed the color on this glow. Next, what I did was selected all of these elements, not including the POV shot, right click and added these into a new compound clip. And then I added a few more effects. I added a light ray effect to this. So if we drag that on, get that sort of like glow effect. And then I also added on this hologram effect and just played around with the settings until I was happy with how that looked. Next, I'm going to disable the graphics and I need to track the graphics to the video, select the bottom video clip and go over to the trackers over here and click on the plus sign to add a tracker. And you just want to track the sort of background of the video clip. So it helps if you have a tracking point I like to click on point cloud over here and then click on analyze. 
Now it's created the tracker. We click done and re-enable the graphics, select them, go to the transform tool here. Up here, click on tracker and go to tracker and then object track, which is the one we just created. And then open up settings again and make sure rotation is disabled. So now the graphics are tracked to the camera movement. Next step is to mask out the hand so we can see the hand in front of the graphics. So let's copy and paste our bottom video clip and just drag it to the top. Select the video clip and go to the one tool here and then add the magnetic mask effect and just select the hand in the shot by clicking on it. And then if we hold down option, we can deselect the parts that we don't want to add into the track. Once the hand is selected, we can click analyze up here and this will track the mask to the hand. Up here, I just turned down the feather quite a lot. So now we can select the graphics and just move those into position. If you want to change the scale, then I'd recommend going into the graphics and changing the scale in here so it doesn't affect any of the effects that we added. To animate the graphics onto the screen at the start, what I did was I keyframed the opacity. So I added a keyframe at the start. I started the opacity at zero and then moved it up to 100. I also added some movement to it so we could keyframe it. I use this animation effects preset. I used the slide in from the bottom. I just added that to the graphics and changed the settings so that the graphics sort of popped up onto screen. Next, I'm going to add a color grade to the bottom video clip. And on this bottom video clip, if we select it, go to the color board and I'm going to add a, add a keyframe on the exposure at the start. And then when the graphics pop up, I'm going to bring down the exposure to kind of emphasize the graphics. Finally, to create the transition to this final graphics, if we go back into the compound clip and copy and paste our last graphic and we can use that video, drag it up over onto this last marker here. On this last gesture here where we tap the graphics, I'm going to add a zoom in. So I'm going to go to the titles tab, go down to the smooth camera zooms. And I used a ramped zoom into this and move this so it zooms into that shot. I also went up here to the T and increase the zoom. So now we have a zoom into that shot. Then I brought in the video clip and on this video clip, I'm going to select the start of the video, go over to the transitions, and I used a shake transition for this. Double click on one of the transitions and line it up with the marker here. So now if I play that back, we have transitioned from the graphics to the video clip. A few things I forgot to add, another generator behind the graphics. So if we go to the titles and generators, go to dynamic backgrounds again, and I use this alloy generator drag that underneath my graphics, went to the blend mode up here and change the blend mode to screen, add a shape mask to this and add it around those graphics with a nice feather. After adding the shape mask, if we go to the transform tool here, go to tracker and select the track that we made earlier, make sure rotation is deselected. So now it should be tracked to the video. I also added a handheld shake effect to the whole video. And to do that, let's go to the titles tab up here, add in an adjustment layer. And then I use this handheld shake effect, change some of the settings to match the video clip. And yeah, there we go. That is the finished effect. All of the links to some of the extra effects I use will be in the description. In the next video, I'll be going through some really cool effects. So subscribe if you want to check that out. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.